some thick D and D. Where last we left our heroes, it was evening in the wide. You were doing your investigation. Uh, Dragomir was distracting Escarol Nortamas uh, by looking at the ship grate. Yes. <laughs> and the rest of you were actually performing some type of look at shithole. Honest investigation. <laughs> <laughs> doing something actually of value to other people. <laughs> and uh, we very last left off with Zanzer uncovering the track of boot prints through a, a dusty area. It looks like some masonry had been going on in there recently, so there was a lot of stone dust that hadn't yet been washed away, part of like under a covered bridge and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you find that there are boot prints from someone who uh, was either like a halfling or a child or an adolescent. Um, a younger or smaller person. And that is where we open. Uh, do we want to follow this uh, set of tracks? It's not leading into Poo Tunnels, <laughs> so we're, we're not in Poo Town. I, I distinctly remember saying at the close of last session, like, Dragomir would, would be probably of a mind to say, let's put a pin in that. And go back to Raven Garden and say, oh, hey, yeah. why the hell are we investigating on the City Watch's turf? And why aren't they, mm-hmm. A, either helping or B, getting really pissed off about it? Yeah. I think, you guys, I think you guys said like a cadre of things you wanted to bring up with him. Yeah. So one of the things that does pop up a lot, that. <clears throat> and uh, shame on me for not conveying it clearly if it wasn't conveyed clearly. Raven Guard is doing this because it is a visible thing that the Fist is doing work. Mm-hmm. He wants the Fist to be prominently recognized as the company that actually solves the crime mm-hmm. because he wants to shame a little bit the Watch. Mm-hmm. He's still pretty pissed off about what happened on the day Abdel Adrian was killed because the Watch had a chance to intervene and they spent it climbing up buildings instead of defending their dukes. Yeah. Um, this is more about an ego thing between the Watch and the Fist. And you guys are currently trying to support the fist. So if you bring this information to him, he's going to be like, yeah, go back out there and do the thing I told you to do. Okay. So he knows that the, the watch isn't doing their job and he's putting us okay. in places where they aren't doing their job. It may not necessarily be that he knows specifically uh, they're not doing their job right now, but more that he doesn't trust them to do their job. I, I think it's more speaking. likely he sent us here with the intention of we were going to shoulder them out of the way and say, yeah, dude. This is our crime scene. No, yes. not anymore. Um, and oh, it's 1980s New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except that when we got here, the watch is noticeably absent, and I mm-hmm. think it's because there we've covered enough uh, inconsistencies between the two vandalisms that this one's staged on behalf of somebody. Yeah. We just don't know why and for what. And they're trying, if it's staged, they're trying to implicate... One of the families is uh, a patriarch family, the Overin family. They're both actually patriarchs. They're both patriarchs. And we also were under the impression, given everything else that we're sort of figuring out here, that um, Escarol is making this pitch to for us to go out and deal with these people violently because he's trying to pull a scam. He's trying to pull a fast one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it may be that he wants us to overstep our boundaries... So that he can redeem the watch, mm-hmm. you know. Look at look at what uh, uh, Raven Guard's uh, uncouth thugs did. Yeah. And there was also the I know you just had his name up and you took him down, but we were some of you were very suspicious of the. Uh, That's what I was talking about. Escarol. Escarol. Okay, yeah. thank you. Master. I forgot, his, I forgot yeah. his name. I keep wanting to say Escarol. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I think. Some never change. I think. Ravengard, because Ravengard knows that the watch is not around, that's not the primary thing we need out of him right now. I think we have to follow this lead that we have so that we can, on our own, figure out what's going on. And, like, once again, no one gives a shit that Elvidel Adrian died or, like, how he died or what happened. And we're caught up in the power vacuum right now. So it's... It's what we want to get out of it at this point, really. And We're... question about these boot prints. Sorry, I don't mean to talk no. about you. Question about the boot prints. Is this the um, the actual track or the track that we believe is kind of a phony track? Um, <clears throat> you hadn't made a roll sufficient to determine that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we did determine that the gate and the path to the gate is not something a skilled thief would have used, right? Correct. If this was somebody who was a professional... And you assume now that the other five jobs must have been done by professionals. This, this was, was done by this was amateurs. Done. Yeah, I, I do want to clarify something. I, I, I think, I don't think we, I don't think we think that um, 
they're not necessarily professional thieves. They're not professional stone cutters. Right. Yes. They could There's, be very skilled thieves. In fact, somebody said before the close of last session reminded me that there was all sorts of children yes. in with yes. the guild. Yeah. And it sort of clicked in my brain. Oh, I wonder if it's one of those little rugrats that was kind of following me around. You know, mm. just just a thought tickling the back of my brain, not yes. necessarily. I think proof. that'd be it'd be tough for a child though, because the hands on that statue are many feet in the air and very heavy. I'm climbing. Yeah, True. but I mean, even a nimble ten-year-old is going to have trouble hefting a hundred pounds worth of stonework hands and hamster. That's these, why I looked these around. These hands ahead. are smaller so, than the machinists. Are smaller. The machinists are smaller. These are, uh, ones yeah. are yeah. punk. These are pretty big. Yeah, they're they're. I would say each hand's probably about this wide. Okay, you know what they say about big hands. So maybe maybe not hundred pounds all together. Yeah, heavy but statues, yeah. Probably in the neighborhood of at least 60, 70 pounds. I mean, it's okay. more than I personally would want to carry as a full grown adult man. So. Yeah, especially from the wide to the outer city. That's I'm not, like I'm forty not, minutes of walking. And I'm not saying that the children weren't involved. I'm just saying that if they were, they had somebody to do some heavy lifting. In but time. interestingly, our our DM shed some light. He's right there. Uh, he mentioned that Benjamin just mentioned that these footprints might have been left by a halfling, or somebody smaller than an adult male, at least. S girl is a halfling. He is. How? What is the halfling population ratio around here? Not very much, right? Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. Okay. Gnomes. There are gnomes as well. They're probably similar size footprints. Probably one percent. But yeah. they're also not an organization. They're not like a faction. Yeah. The the you don't know halflings being their own specific deal. They blend in with other factions. Um, well, in the absence of any other better plans, I say we follow tracks. Okay. Yeah, they're not going to last forever, and they're only going to go so far because we can only see them because they're in the dust of the masonry. So and if they, they are, if they are fake, it'd be nice to know what sort of pointer they were trying to leave. Yeah. All right. Want to roll? You are the tracker. You actually made the roll last time, so you were able to follow them without any incident. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna grab my. Fat stack of hot notes. Yeah, girl. S girl. S girl. S girl. <laughs> All right, no. Um, that's no. just dumb. <laughs> yeah, so. That's fair enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, the tracks do lead, as you would have originally anticipated, towards the Heap Gate, which is a gate that connects the uh, upper city to the lower city. It is uh, much like all the other gates in the city. It's superly steep slopes, and the slopes are uh, worn smooth cobblestone that are constantly drenched with sea rain. And when you get to the gate, you find that there are a pair of watch members who are standing here to, like, check that people coming and going are actually of the nobility. Mm. Um, it's the overnight crew. They're pretty lax. They're kind of hanging around, bullshitting about something off-topic. They pay little attention to you. And there is a young man who is clearly not part of the upper city. He's kind of disheveled looking. He's wearing uh, some torn clothing, uh, like a, a wool hat that's sort of clamped over his ears. And he's wearing some uh, fingerless gloves. And he's actually holding a long stick with an oil lantern on the end. Hmm. And he's just standing around, like, kind of every once in a while, he'll chat with these guards as they're having their conversation. But mostly he's, like, leaning up on the stone wall and hanging around. Every once in a while, he'll actually, he does have a lit cigarette, mm -hmm. and he just takes a puff on the cigarette. And what time of day is this again? It's evening. Evening. Yeah. This is a nighttime investigation. For some reason, I was under the impression it was first thing in the morning. That's what I thought, too. Well, it's evening now. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost time. We've clearly been abducted by aliens. <laughs> Abdel alien. Abdel aliens. <laughs> <laughs> not confirmed. <laughs> it's the doppelgangers. All right, so the paths lead, the, the, the trail, oh, this would be a question for you, the trail leads through the gate? I'm assuming the trail leads through the gate. Yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna actually whisper probably to you two, because he's kind of the, the man muscle. Um, Ooh, the man muscle. Duh. Keep, keep, keep an eye out for, like, anywhere they might have hidden the this big stone hand thing. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to keep following the tracks, but they, I, stone glove. I suspect that they ditched him. I suspect yeah. they ditched him in shrubbery or down a well or who knows what. So just keep an eye out for possible hiding places of uh, I got some bitching handies. investigation. And we know that the crime in the wide happened at night. So if these two guys at the heat gate are the same guys that were the overnight crew the night before, they would have had to have seen something. I think that's his job. Why don't you go 
lean on this. You want to go chat him up? Lean on those dudes for a little bit. Hey, girl. Yes, <laughs> girl. Actually, Paul, you're right. It is actually, it is daytime right Okay. Now. Oh, you're it right. is daytime. You are right. Uh, retcon that. It is daytime. Um, it is uh, probably early afternoon by the time you get all the way up here and do your investigation and start walking around. Makes sense. All right, so you guys are going to investigate looking for places where they might have ditched hands? So I'm yes. going to keep walking. I'm going to try to keep so. on this trail while they scour for hands. <laughs> well, <it> smells weird. <laughs> but I guess it's not. And I'll, I'll talk to the guards. If it gets super distracting and I'm standing up, let me know. I'll sit back down. Mm-hmm. But right now, I feel better standing. As long as you keep your pants on. No, viral. When you were sitting down, it didn't matter. But now, maybe they promises. No, uh, no, I'm less interested. <laughs> I'm actually going to go with. I'm going to go hang out next to Dragomir because I don't have investigation, but I do have insight. Oh. Mm. Let's go track. I like it. Let's go track. All right. So I scare Team him money. and you decide what comes out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of fall back as they go up there and sort of look around, see if the footsteps at any point indicate that their load got lighter or if there's any, like, rubble uh, chunks. Roll. Rubble chunks. <laughs> That's whoa! That's, that's a nineteen plus five. So Some yeah. of the boot prints are actually facing backwards, as though it was one person standing like this and the other person standing like this, mm-hmm. and they're carrying something heavy with mm-hmm. one person backing up mm-hmm. in a hurry. And where does um, that end? Uh, it continues through the dust, and at that point, you lose track of where it is. Basically, it's, there's this dust path, and there's parts of the road that are cleaned out by rain, and you get from one to the other with a coherent path going towards the heat gate as you're going through. Uh, one thing you catch with your gigantic investigation <coughs> roll is that there are some um, sort of smooth, long lines uh, a couple feet out from where these two sets of boot prints are, as though something was dragging uh, outside of the range of their boot prints. Um, with your gigantic investigation, you think it might have been like a blanket or something they were using to cover up what they were smuggling out. That's not how you spell cover. <laughs> Spelling will not be reflected on your grade. Well, it's not in the syllabus. <laughs> you should sucking. see how I spelled all these assholes' names. A L L T H E. Um. So the the terminus of this path. Uh, what is where is that in relation to the actual gate itself? A couple hundred feet away. It's within eyesight. Okay. But I cannot see that they got it out. Correct. Uh, okay, so it's definitely it is, around here somewhere. It is conceivable that they would have taken a side street and gone somewhere else. It just doesn't appear very likely to you because you literally can see the guards. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't, like, tell, like, any change of direction that they went to from You don't see any okay. change of direction, no. It, it terminates before there's any sort of change. Um, what, like, buildings or shops or anything are around me? Uh, nearby, it's mostly residences. Okay. Like, no sewer grates or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Okay. It's possible they could have put it in someone's house. Yeah. So where would I find out? For what it's worth, you do not see any, like, broken windows or anything, so somebody would have had to open a door for that. Yeah. They garage. were a, they were either couch. allowed in or lock fixed their way in. <laughs> Next to the road couch. I was going to say, somebody's, somebody's watching a football game resting on a big stone boo right now. Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, or if mm. you're... I want to. I want to hear you lean onto these guards. Yes, yeah, I would like to lean shit. on right. some guards. All right. So yeah, there's these two guards and this guy who's holding the stick with a lantern on it. And uh, as you get nearer, the guy with the stick and the lantern sort of stands up straight and tries to make himself look presentable. He's trying to make an impression of some kind. You're not really sure. Um, it looks like he's one of the guys who, when you are lost at night or you need to go somewhere at night, you would hire on a lamp lad or a lamp lass to yeah. like, light the way to where you're going and just follow you with like. <laughs> Basically like a cabbie for people who walk. Yeah. A link um, boy. That's it? They were called link boys. Oh, sure. That, that's a real thing? That's what it's called. A torch uh, is a link. In the module, Take it actually calls inside. them lamp lads and lamp lasses. That's what I'm So he's, he's pretty clearly a lamp lad. He's, right. he's just waiting for a charge for him to, to do something to go get paid. Mm-hmm. And these two guards uh, don't really take much notice of you as you approach until you get, like, obviously close enough that you want to have a conversation, at which point they sort of wrap it up. They're not in a big hurry. They mm-hmm. turn to you. Yes, yes. We are investigating stolen hands from statue. Mm-hmm, okay. They came this way. Okay. Did you see them? No. Uh, we've been on since... The other guy goes, 
a little after sunrise. Yeah, a little after sunrise. It would have been large, big, two men carry with blanket over top. But, uh, unfortunately, I think it was already done by the time we got here. Does that check out? Somebody who knows the details a little better than I do. Uh, we would check out. Okay. You would this anticipate that this was done and they weren't caught. Mm-hmm. It must have been done 10 hours ago. Mm-hmm. We're talking like somebody 11 or 12. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. At this point, it's like noon. Not the same guys on the same shift. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they came out on sunrise. This was done okay. before sunrise. Okay. These guys do sunrise to sunset, and there's a, a couple of guys who do sunset to sunrise. Did your previous guards mention anything that would have fit this description? Uh, and you talk about the carrying the blanket? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he says, um, one of the guards is like, well, no, they don't really, they don't really report anything like that. And then the lamp lad goes, oh, hi, hi, hey. So actually, um, is there a is there a reward? How much money do we have? <sighs> Not being punched with your fist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, somebody's got a bunch of money. I got nineteen uh, gold. Well, this, this kid works for a, like a, a gold, gold a day. Yeah. So. yeah. Give yeah. him two. Give two. No, offer him one. Let him talk us up to two. See what he's got. Okay. <laughs> offer him gold. Yeah, yes, uh, one gold for information. It's like, I don't know, I... If it's um, bad information, I take gold back. I don't really remember the details. I mean, a single gold. I would hate to mislead you. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> says, um... I mean, for a single gold, I, I can walk around with a lantern. I can show you where to go, but I can't really... What about can can I take one big intimidating step forward? You can make a big intimidating roll. <laughs> I mean, one goal is a lot for us right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's not very intimidated by me. That's an eight. He says, Do you have a place you want to go, sir? I'm willing to go up to five. If we need to. But don't don't start with that. <laughs> no. Three gold. All right, very well, very well. He says, uh, Ignatius, last night. Ignatius said he was, uh, helping a couple patriarch kids. Anyway. What were their names? Uh, oh, I don't actually have names prepared for that. Um, he says, uh, uh, I, I don't really know what their names were, but they were definitely some patriarch kids. Uh, they were headed out to, uh, to Brampton. Were they carrying such a package? You no, know, from what I understand, they're carrying something heavy. I thought it was kind of funny, you know, rich kids trying to do some manual labor. They were winded. <laughs> kids. Where's Brampton? Yeah, where is it? Is it oh, all the way at the down near Tumble Down. Yeah, we're all the way down to this neighborhood. So it's a long yeah. ways. Yeah. Oh, so they didn't. Oh, that's the lower city, not the outer city. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, we're we're right here. So they were gonna go all the way oh, there. Yeah. So would they? Would would they have rented wagon? Something to carry heavy load? Uh, I mean, we do have a couple of uh, wheelbarrows around. They could have borrowed one of those or or called a rickshaw. I, it's possible Ignatius was helping them carry it at some point. but Ignatius is a guard? No, Ignatius is uh, one of the lamp lads. Where do we find him? Well, he'll be back tomorrow night, uh, probably doing the same shift. Uh, I think he lives out somewhere in the south foot. It's going to take us all night to get out there. I mean, we might as well go to Branton on the way. <laughs> well, it's it's like late afternoon, right? Like, he will be back for the night shift in a few hours, yeah. presumably. Uh, if he, he said tomorrow night. Tomorrow so night. Tonight's, oh. tonight's his night off. Yeah. He doesn't get a day off. <laughs> He's poor. <laughs> <laughs> he did say he had to take him all the way down to the coast. The coast. <sighs> so somewhere along this They're dumping stretch. it in the water. Yeah, it seems like. Part of me wants to go talk to their parents, but I don't know how much luck we're going to have doing that. Because, like, we may get the, like, you know, like, stern belting type versus the, like, like, like my precious young lad. <laughs> oh, like, my child would never lie. We, we also might get the ones with no parents. Rich kids? Rich oh, kids. oh, the rich kids. The rich yeah. kids. We don't know the rich kids' names, though. No. Yeah. no but we, we have their family names. We have their family names. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they would just close ranks. Yeah. They don't want... They're not going to appreciate the fist. 
They're not gonna appreciate getting fisted. Yeah, we need we need Fucking to fix we need to fist these kids red handed. Um, we can go back to the ah! we can go back to the ah! office and sit on the furniture. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, loud, loud. I have a red hand. <laughs> Take us to coast. Very well. Uh, it'll be one gold. You've been paid. Lead the way. <laughs> uh, give me another intimidation roll. <laughs> Berber. Uh, that's an 18. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> you step up and you cast his whole body in the shadow. <laughs> he's, uh, he's actually kind of amused because he stands out here for the day shift, but nobody needs a lamp during the day. <laughs> unless it's like really badly raining or whatever. Yeah. So he doesn't even light the lamp. He just starts walking and leading you around. And uh, he leads you from the heat gate uh, right here. All the way down these uh, downward traveling, and they are like sloped, smooth cobblestone. Mm -hmm. And in places it is so smooth and so wet and so slick that the residents have thrown things like sand and straw and stuff like that on the cobblestone just to give you some sort of traction Mm -hmm. to walk up and down these roads. And uh, it brings you all the way down uh, to about here and then starts heading towards the start of the docks on this side. Mm -hmm. Um, while we're on the way, Zanzer, maybe you want to keep your eyes open for anything. That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of keeping my eyes open for anything that suggests yeah. something out of place, like this big thing dropped or anything goofy and stupid. I mean, if they're going downhill at this point, carrying a heavy weight like that, it's going to be a lot harder than just putting it on the ground and letting it slide. Right. right. Are there any ways to tell if, like the the sand and the straw have been like completely stripped in some places or like yes. tracking down. Yes. Um, I was so... also thinking about, sorry, I was also thinking about resting. <laughs> Putting it down and resting. Yeah. So, uh, first things first is as you get through the gate, you actually do hear that there is a halfling man on the other side of the gate. He's apparently a Fleming Fist operative. Mm. Uh, a couple of Fleming Fist goons on the opposite side of the gate. And uh, this halfling guy who's he's wearing the tabard and like the helmet and like the full ensemble. And he's bitching super loud about how he has to wear all of this gear in the middle of the day when it's hot out. (laughs) How hard he has to work to get people in and out of the gates. How much he hates his job and hates his boss. He's basically the quintessential uh, union worker. Mm. Right past him and two guards who are like, Oh, you're sure right, Lock here. It's it's real rough or whatever. I don't care. Um, And you you walk past him and then as you're going down towards... Should should we talk to him? See if he's... He works for... For the fist, though. Yeah, I guess if you knew anything, we'd probably already have heard it. Plus, he's working during the day, and you assume they probably had a shift change. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Working nine to five. Um, several places. To make a living. <laughs> As you were coming down the slick hillway, uh, through each side and down in the east way, you do actually see there are places where straw has been upturned, uh, or gravel's been pushed out of the way, mud's been smeared, and so forth, uh, as if something heavy and sort of rounded was dropped on top of something, and then drag the short ways or whatever. Uh, but it's very, very short intervals. And with your banging investigation carrying over to this moment, um, you realize that's probably because dragging such an object would be really loud. And mm. this was the middle of the night we're trying to do this on the, on the slide. Hmm. I mean, if we had more time, I'd say let's knock on the doors adjacent to these drag marks to see if they heard anything or saw anything, but I think what we're trying to do is get to the coast before they dump this stuff. I have a feeling I already it's probably did. too late. Yeah, it's so probably late. too late. That happened last night. Yeah. I mean, if we want, if we want to split the party. But we may be able to track them after they dumped it. I mean, yeah. the other guys kind of just yeah. I got mean, we, suicided, but we know the general route in which it happened. Mm. So we could still knock on doors on the way back up. Yeah. Okay. Continue to follow then, I suppose. Okay. Um, I would like a. Survival seems like the appropriate check for this. Rather than tracking kind of thing, yeah. check for me. Well, for everybody who wants to help track. Yep. All right, I will get in the way, so I'm not going to bother doing that. That's a six. I guess tracking on pavement is not my skill. 18. 18 is pretty good. Or your skill. You know what? I'm not trained, but... 13. That's actually good enough, so more than 50% of the people who tried. Uh, Ollie of Zanzer is having a lot of trouble with this. You're probably tired or something, I don't know. Yeah. It's all like goat banging. 
<laughs> but at this point, it's uh, all that fancy eyeshadow you're wearing. <laughs> Nemea is the one who's gotten full Sherlock Holmes and is connecting all the dots at this point. So Nemea is the one taking the lead on finding your way down towards the coast. And yes, in fact, you do find a path that leads from Eastway all the way down to the docks. And then it continues along the dockside way uh, into Brampton and onto the bed right above this pier right here. Hmm. At which point, there is a large divot in the ground, like something very heavy was dropped down fairly roughly. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of uh, boat operators here, like houseboats that are used as ferries when the folks who operate them are awake. Boat operator. And there are three boats who are currently parked dockside here. Well, they are potential witnesses. I suppose we should talk to them. We should ask them if there are any other boats that usually dock there that are missing. Mm. That or if they are a big plop in the middle of the night. Or if it may have been like loaded onto another boat and brought somewhere. To the middle of the... Brought to the fucking frat there. house of these rich boys to put <laughs> over the toilet. I mean, if there's a frat house for rich boys, it's in the upper city. They wouldn't have taken it this far. <laughs> they, they were clearly dumping this. Uh, yeah, let's talk to boat operators. Okay. Um, operate on boats. Who's going to take the lead on the investigation? Um, I do talkie bits. Okay. That yeah. sounds like you then. Roll a D3. A D3. Okay. Uh, that is a three. Okay. Um, so you head out to the end of the pier. There are two boats on the left, one on the right. And you start with the one on the right. Mm -hmm. And you knock on the door of this little houseboat. And a man comes out. Yeah. Can I help you? Uh, my name is Dragomir. I'm with the Flaming Fist. Uh, Thomas. Good to meet you. Hi, Thomas. Dragomir. <laughs> Uh, statue was vandalized, hands stolen from the wide. Okay. We follow the path to the dock over there. Yeah. You seen any men carrying large bundle wrapped in blanket, dumped in the water? Maybe yeah. placed on another boat, taken away. Dumped in water? No, but a couple of rich kids I took uh, up in the Twin Songs last night. Do you know their names? Uh, Artie. Artie Oberon. Artie Oberon. No, 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 the other one. He brought them to the Twin Songs? Yeah, I, uh, I, I run this, this boat as a ferry. <sighs> it was during the nighttime hours. Did they have a large package with them? <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, I had something coming up in a blanket. I didn't cry. What, what did he bring them to? Twin, Twin Songs. Songs. It's this okay, neighborhood here. That's a shit neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I would ask Theo, because she know, or he knows that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Theo, that place is fucking yeah. garbage. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> Theo <laughs> is actually originally from Brampton. Oh. Oh. Neat. How oh. unfortunate. Um, <laughs> unfortunate. Do we do we take the ferry ride? Yeah, I guess. I, so. I feel like that's going to be the quickest way to get there. Otherwise, we have to like haul, haul ass up through yeah. the city. Yeah. And then if we find something down there, Worms is Worms Crossing still a fist place? Yes. Okay. It's a place it's for fisting. It's just the <laughs> fist. <laughs> yeah, but like if we needed Older to... Older Raven Guard doesn't make it his headquarters anymore, but, but it's still But if we a got there stronghold. and like needed to hold somebody there, we could. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah they do have a prison there. <clears throat> oh, I love putting fucking rich kids in jail. Let's go do it. Fucking Chad and Tad. Let's yep. get it. How much for a ferry ride to where you brought the young rich kids? I charge two gold. We did save two gold on the lamplighter kid. We did, yeah. yeah. That's my daily yeah, budget. That, that kid is pissed off by the time you start this investigation. He's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> he did his job. He didn't want to do it. Either. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right, fair Did right. we actually give him the gold before he left? Yeah, he took his three gold. Uh, I imagine okay. we had to pay him up front. Okay. Yeah. He wouldn't have done anything on credit. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me just open you an account. What's your name? Credit card number. <laughs> Can I have your social? <laughs> Take PayPal. <laughs> Venmo. Venmo. <laughs> Perhaps a gift card. <laughs> Venmo, lamp emoji. <laughs> um. <laughs> You can only pay by money order. <laughs> so you have to go all the way back out and like, wait in line. Go to the First National Brampton Bank. <laughs> gotta wait and stop and shop for the wire. <laughs> the Brampton Bank closes at four, so you gotta go to ye old Walmart across the way. <laughs> so, yeah, all right, it's, it's too cold to take a, a ferry ride on his boat. And he, he tells you, like, you're a big one. Normally I wouldn't do trips during the day, but for two gold, I think I'd ferry you and your companions. 
All right, I, I will. Since you paid for the lamplighter, I'll pay for the ferry ride. Oh, cool! I have a little bit of money. I can um, take two gold. Yep. Although I imagine that Raven Guard's not paying us for so we the... can get uh, reimbursed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Chopper reports. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he um he doesn't have like a pre-made thing, but he does actually have the ability to sign off on a thing. So yeah, I paid. You pay two gold for this. Travel. Excellent. Cool. Um, Get reimbursed for it. Who does that? Um, the lamplighter probably doesn't offer the same service. He unmoors the ship after you've all jumped on board, and he's got a contraption in the back that's like a pedal system where he can pedal a rotating. It's a paddle boat. We are yeah, on a paddle boat. Yeah, it's, it's a big fucking paddle boat. But yeah, and he starts paddling away, and it starts going downriver. And as soon as it catches the current, it zooms straight down the Chayantar uh, until he can see the twin songs docks. A scant. Five minutes later, this thing is going fast down the river, <laughs> and uh, you arrive. It's Twin gone to plaid. <laughs> and he pulls up to the docks, and he says, "Welcome to Twin Songs. I hope you enjoyed your journey. Get the hell off my boat." <laughs> and we do. Um, I imagine now his work really begins because now he's got to paddle that stupid thing upstream. Yeah, he's actually got to push pretty hard, but that's what he got <laughs> the two gold for. <laughs> his thighs are jacked. Well, yeah, <laughs> he never skips leg day. Yeah. <laughs> Leg night. Leg night. <laughs> when you arrive there, Every night is leg night. Leg night. <laughs> you don't need to roll to detect it. It's fairly obvious. You get to the docks. You get off the dock. You know, he starts pedaling away the other direction. You start walking onto shore, and there is a spot where a cobblestone has been crushed by a heavy weight dropped on top of it. Cracked stone, little fragments everywhere. Uh, and there's actually also a, a little bit of red fiber that is hmm. stuck into the uh, stonework here, as if something made of... Some sort of red woolen cloth was pinched and torn. So the blanket they are wrapping this thing in is probably red. Seems that way. Right. I collect the evidence and put it in my component bag. Okay. You now have wool. Good job. <laughs> wool. <laughs> we'll test it for DNA later. And I would like either a perception or an investigation check, depending on what is better for each of you. Investigation. I hope I want to use this one. Investigation is actually better than my perception. They're both negative one. Yeah. Uh, I got a crit. 14. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, hey, hey. Yeah. 16. Non natural 20. 16. Holy oh, shit. It's because it's not cobblestone, it's like dirt over there. And I'm yeah. more comfortable in dirt. Yeah, it's true. Okay, dirt boy. <laughs> all right. Normally, this would be a difficult investigation, but because you all succeeded, uh, you were all able to quickly identify and sort of hive mind the trail leading to a, an establishment <laughs> called Hadru's Pottery. Hadru? Hadru. H A D R U. H A D R U. Hadru's Pottery. It's like Claytopia. Hadru's Pottery Barn. And it says in like a small scripted font in some sort of gold leafing Horgold Hadru's Pottery Shop. Shop I, with a positive B. Shop. I am about to be either the proverbial or the literal bull in the china shop. Seems that way. <laughs> You arrive in front of the shop. The shop is open. The sign is hanging out front. And uh, the door is actually slightly ajar to indicate that the room is open. Mm. Let's go in. Let's go in. Um, do we take this time to split the party and somebody check out the back? In case somebody darts out the back door. I, I was actually thinking of doing something like that already. So I'm calling okay. uh, What's your investigation? My investigation? Yeah. Bad. Okay. Oh. Um, That's well, well, she's got the insight. I've so got, I got, you two I've got in. insight, so let's go in because we are less likely to break things than these two. Fair. Fair. But I'm going with the social skills. I've got shit for That's charisma. True. Uh, I don't shit. mind checking out the back myself. I... Alright. Yeah, uh, they might have girls. They might have uh, they, might have, they might have girls or they might have goats. I said girls. They might have girl goats. But who's think, interested in that? I think she's <laughs> Dragomir could go inside, and I could go up back with that guy because I got to bang an investigation. If that okay. works, yeah. okay. Yeah. I think that that split of teams is actually pretty. Yeah, pretty for helpful. this thing specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, good cop, bad cop. Yeah. Do you want to be the first one or the second one? I mean, obviously you're gonna be the good cop, but I mean, do you want to be the first one to talk or the second one to talk? Uh. First one. All right. I'll let you do your thing. Alright. So we'll start with the two entering from the front. Uh, before we do it, is there guidance we can throw around or anything? I don't think she has guidance. I do not have guidance. Okay. 
Just making sure. Um. I point when I go that way. <laughs> Door. <laughs> <laughs> well, da, 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 da. I, I climb out of the window I was in. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, I have Bless, which is not good for... That's so Skill checks. Skill checks. Skill checks. All right. Thank you. Uh, then, Theo, the floor is yours. All right. I step inside. Uh, I'm trying to write something different and talk at the same time. <laughs> uh, Let me know when you're ready, because I have dialogue. Okay. Uh, go inside. Mm-hmm. Look around. See if there's someone in the shop. If there's, yes. like, a hand with a hamster just like, <laughs> so, hanging no, out. No evidence of crime inside of the uh, the room from a glance. Uh, it is a room that has wooden shelves, plain wooden shelves, mm-hmm. with various decorated pots, glazed things. It appears to be a kiln in the corner. It's not currently in use, so it's not super hot in here like you'd expect it would be. There is a man who is currently manning a turntable. He's paddling the turntable as it spins around, shaping a clay vase with his hands. And he says, yes, hello, and welcome to Hadru's shop. How can I help? Uh, are you, are you Hadru? Yes, I am. Oh, hello, Hadru. I'm, I'm, I'm Theodosius Pertinax. It is good to talk to you, yes? And he's facing his vest. He's he's not paying attention to you. He's coming. Okay. Um, I, we were curious, um, we were, we are up from the lower city. Um, wanted to know if, do you only do vases and things like that, or do you do, do you work in sculpture? I will do pottery, earthenware. Ovenware. Oh. Good for heat. Good for heat. Good for water. Um, Good for heart. Uh, is this guy halfway or is he a human? He's a human man. He's, He's a portly man. man. Okay. He has a, Sorry, uh, I, missed, I missed that description. Go ahead. He has a, a bald spot on top. Otherwise, he's got long black hair. Uh, he's got his beard tied off and it hangs down to about here. And he's got like sort of stringy black hair that goes over his shoulders as he works this pot. And he, he appears to be a master work. Mm-hmm. Craft. He is making some exceptionally well-made pottery. Not like one in a million, but like one in a hundred, kind of. Like, this guy is very good, noticeably. Um, do you mind if we take a look around? I see you're very busy right now, but it doesn't feel very hot in here. He says, yes, yes, it is not kiln day. Kiln day is on Tuesday and Wednesday, but feel free to check. Uh, all stock is on shelves. I have nothing special order. Kiln day is Tuesday and Wednesday? Yep. What's today? Uh, Friday. Oh. TGIF. <laughs> <laughs> um, for its worth, D&D has a 10-day schedule of <coughs> days that have names. I don't remember them, so I'm going to go with regular Monday and Monday through, through Sunday, and then like eight day, nine day, and ten day. Eight day, nine day, ten day. There you go. Stupid Lassie Smarch. <laughs> Stupid Smarch weather. <laughs> Do you have anything in the kiln right now? I, I, I know it's not kiln day. No, but it's not hot. It's not hot? Do you mind if I take a look inside? I, I've never seen one so close. But by all means, the kiln is uh, there. Okay, let me go over and I lift up the lid on the kiln. Yeah, the kiln's maybe this big. Inside, it's a chamber mm-hmm. too small for the hands, for okay. sure. Um, it is grated and has a, a large base at the bottom for coals with uh, some sort of like a stone or clay um, perforated way to get heat through without as much smoke. Okay. Uh, small hands. Sort of like an oval, like egg-shaped kind of kiln with a chimney. Okay. Mm. Well, my one idea is just shot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you want to take a crack at it? I sure do. Uh, I start by walking over to the door and, like, flipping the, the open sign to close and shutting the door and locking it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will approach, uh, Hadru. Where are hens from statue? Yeah. Um, give me an intimidate check. Nat 20. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes! <laughs> the wheel stops. Uh, and at this point, you hear him sigh. I was just trying to do a favor for young boys. I apologize. They are below. Who are these boys? Uh, Theo Bron. And, uh, and Samson. Ravenshade. What is favor you do for them? 
Their father was built and melted some gambling debt some years ago. I was just trying to help. For your cooperation, I will allow you to lock shop before I take you into custody. But I... I... I give you everything you needed. You are concealing stolen property. You will testify against these boys. He sort of shudders. He says, I am going to accrue so many more debts. That is your problem. Uh, very, very well. They're, they're downstairs. Lock your shop. Collect your belongings. He goes and he uh, he does actually like swing shut the latch, put the bolt through it. Uh, he goes behind the counter and pulls his cash box. He pulls out all of his coinage, pulls out uh, a couple mementos and things like that. He pulls something off the wall. Looks like an illustration of some kind of his wife. Nice, very, very well. I put him in manacles. And I guess we'll go pop our heads out the back door and be like, "Come on, hands, go down here." <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll like sniff it around. <laughs> I'll stay inside in the meantime and um, ask Hadru what he thinks the the total market value of the shop and everything is in it is. He gives you an estimate of somewhere in the neighborhood of eighty-five gold. Eighty-five gold for everything in the. Yeah, the kiln's probably 60 or 65 of it, and the rest of it is just frontage. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I've been looking for it in this opportunity. I make shitty pots. <laughs> it's good for shitting. <laughs> it's, a, it's a market. Especially in a coastal town. All you do is go outside and... <laughs> Yeah, my poop's in the street. It's gonna rain soon. Fuck you. Give it a yeet and my poop's in the street. <laughs> That's what I always say. Yeah. <laughs> but but you have indoor really... plumbing. This is you. <laughs> the, the secret is when you flush the toilet, it just shoots it like a cannon in the road. <laughs> indoor plumbing like on my bowels. <laughs> like a fucking whale blows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put in those little things like at the drive-thru bank. <laughs> <laughs> or just go to the drive-thru bank, really. Yeah, it's a pottery yeah. shop, it's terracotta, so it shatters on impact. <laughs> I've had a poop to do that. that is... Maybe he just poops right in his kiln and just burns it all up. So he, gets he only poops on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. <laughs> like, you know, like Don't you fuel, except it's people. <laughs> okay, uh, so... And what were his, what were his gambling debts? Uh, he just liked to play cards over at the Kalamshan Jewel Emporium. No, like, oh. Oh. Kalamshan Jewel Emporium. That was where, uh, this lady is. Oh. Well, I wasn't there to hear that. <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, but, like, I mean... <laughs> Like how how large were his debts? Like was it like sixty gold? Was it a couple a, of dozen gold? A the dozen startup gold. investment for a second franchise basically is what he was going for. Mm. He was trying to expand, and he wanted to expand faster than his business would allow. Mm. And he's not. And now that he's been intimidated. He's not afraid to tell you basically everything, thinking it might get him off the hook for something. So he is just gushing about his history and his gambling and his friends and his contacts and everything. None of it sounds even remotely useful to you at all. Okay. Other than he helped these two rich kids hide their crime, and he did not know what crime they committed, only that they had done something wrong and that he owed their family a debt. What a okay. fucking knack. Um, <laughs> so... So Dragomir's plan, and then there's got to be a better one, is... Um, Bring this, bring this guy up to Worms Crossing. Lock him up so that the uh, the rich kids can't get to him to tell him to change his story. And then we collect as many flaming fist guys as will follow us, and we go raid these two houses and arrest these two kids. Aren't the kids in the basement? Or is only the just hands? hands. Just the, hands. Oh. the impression is that the kids have Fucked come off. here last night. You don't know where they are yet. Oh. Yeah, they might be in the basement. Um. Oh, let's go find them. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hit the basement with a morning star. <laughs> uh, roll damage. <laughs> kids fall. Uh, it's like a pinata for children. <laughs> My favorite kind. Uh, a kidnata. <laughs> I think I may still have. I don't know how. I'm gonna check and see how long a spell lasts. But my familiar may still exist, and we can like send. Pretty sure your familiar lasts until you dismiss it or it dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've. I think then Zeph is still around, and I can like 
Currently yeah. a rat. Zeph is a rat right now. Sending the rat into, into little holes. Sending the rat into the basement to have a look around and yeah. the Richard eyeball Gear knows that problem. Telepathy thing. What? Lemmy Winks, no. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze a rat into a small hole. Oh my that god. Was, that was a hamster. I oh no. Same yeah. difference. Gerbil? Um, ah, yeah. that's what it was. Sorry, I'm not up yeah, on my celebrity bestiality rumors. <laughs> yeah, so let's, um, we've, we've got over, you. Over a long time of great pressure, you could change a rat to a hamster. <laughs> we've got you with had Hadru, um, Hagrid, um, in the shop. Um, oh, you're a wizard. You're in, so why don't we have somebody, like, at the top of the stairs where the cellar is, somebody where any of the, like, windows and exits are, and somebody at the entrance to the shop just to, like, cover our bases. Yeah, you can easily cover it up. Yeah, yeah um, so I'm going to send the rat into the basement and have a look around. The basement yeah. window's are only about this big. If somebody's getting out of there, they're coming out through the stairs. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll stay at the top of the stairs, um, then. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'll basically s- trying to get enough information from Hadra to basically do yeah. the good cop thing of, like, listen, maybe I can get you a plea deal. Like, you didn't know what was going on. That's what he's working towards, too. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the cost of your shop is less than or is greater than your gambling debts were so like maybe we can well the debts are paid the debts are paid but like you committed this crime for less than what someone yeah. the, paid your gambling debts the only reason I want to lock them up and throw away the key is because I, these, these people have influence and I don't want them to get to them and say hey listen we'll give you a million gold and you can change your story you know? yeah, or kill exactly, them or kill them or kill them sort of double insurance making yeah. sure that he knows that there might be something better for him than letting these guys in and, and changing a story. Pissing me off. Yeah. Alright, rat. So I give my rat a little kiss and I send my rat into the basement. <laughs> He's all black. Oh, yeah. For rat. aesthetic. <laughs> Racist. Can you say the argument, <laughs> argument give me a stealth roll? Sure. Uh, for the rat. I Except his butthole. He's proficient. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty well looking at this roll with proficiency. <laughs> okay. Pro- okay, proficiency. What is my proficiency roll? Two. Yes? Yes. Uh, that's going to be 16? Okay, yeah, the rat clambers down the stairs a little bit. Okay. At first, you think it might be a little noisy, and when you, the rat gets down there and conveys to you what it sees, it is uh, two bored, rich kids laying in hammocks downstairs with a large pair of stone hands that is slightly obscured by a red blanket that's been sort of pulled away from it. Smoking oh. weed? Just hanging out. Okay. Oh, well, then shall we storm the basement, ladies and gents? I was hoping to have some weed. <laughs> well, I mean, we won't know that till we toss awesome. <laughs> Okay, yeah. You uh, made a good friend, huh? We've got all the evidence. Um, am I allowed to change my familiar shape? I need to recast the spell. Yeah. Um, I just want to have a look and make sure. You just made that cat's day? You can have more than one familiar. If you cast the spell, it will adopt the new form. Cool. Because I mean, what I was gonna try to do is send a raven over to all the raven guard, being like, "We got him!" <laughs> but um, I don't know if that's really worth it if we've got enough handcuffs on us. I only have the one set of manacles. Okay. Um, um, but we've got rope. Plenty of rope. Yeah, loads of rope. I got so we 50 hang feet no. <laughs> of hemp and bondage rope. <laughs> wow, did you well, buy it special? <laughs> we could just handcuff them together. Yeah, it's possible. Um, I think that's like hilarious. Hashtag also. ask a cop. <laughs> <laughs> How do you arrest two poor rich kids? Uh, I carry two sets of handcuffs. Dragomir's only level three. <laughs> 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 That's um, oh shit! But I mean, we got plenty of rope, so yeah. I say we just and and if and they're they, rich kids; they're not strong. If we have yeah. to, we'll or do smart. we do subdual damage, and we just drag their limp, unconscious bodies through the street. Oh yeah. god, that's not going to start a riot or anything. I don't like that. care. The cops, I don't care. cops <laughs> store in a basement, beating up two rich kids. <laughs> well, I doubt these people give a shit. Yeah, They're, these are not rich. This is not no. a rich town. You're no, in a but poor I'm, village right now. Yeah, we're in poor town. But once their parents find out, it's you all discuss because you got to pee. It's gonna be a shit show. Okay, sure. I, I think the obvious the obvious thing to do is just go down there first and get hands on them. Figure yeah. out what we're doing with them later. Mm-hmm. They don't try to escape. So while I pee, you figure that out. Okay. Well, then we drag them to Worms Crossing. I guess put them in jail. Mm-hmm. In like the opposite um, opposite end of the prison. Uh, so I can't talk to each other. He's not here. Can't talk to each other and can't influence uh, the pottery dude. Mm -hmm. We should look around for a cart or a wheelbarrow and have them bring the friggin' hands with them. Parade them through the street. Handcuff them to the friggin' wheelbarrow as they push it. Handcuff them to the hands. Shame. Shame. I don't know know if that works. (laughs) 
but but find find a, a cart or a wheelbarrow or something to put these big hands in. And I, well, bring the hands and them to the Worms Crossing. I yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it would have more of an impact if it was in this half of the map than that half of the map. I honestly don't know if no, anybody. Really, I think everybody likes Minsk and Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Minsk and Boo are beloved by all. That's true. Okay. But if we We've already encountered one person who's very pro vigilante justice in the upper city. If we parade these two rich kids out with the hands of Minsk and Boo, they're dead. Even oh, I, I care. That. <laughs> you care sure. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly think, okay, I'm, I, I still am under the impression that um, S Girl's offer was a trap. Yeah. He wants us yeah. to put our foot in our mouth somehow. He probably works for one of the families and wanted us to go on a wild goose chase. Right. I still, I still have my advantage on uh, checks with the people. And I'm assuming these are with the people. I think we got um, we've got uh, big big hulky brute dude, and you're from you're I, a local. Oh yeah, I also have mm-hmm. advantage on. Yeah. Checks. I'm just worried about someone like throwing a rock and having it catch them in the side of the head. And then we don't have our witnesses. And then we don't have a witness and we have a criminals. dead body. But we also don't have the evidence. If we just take them in without the evidence, the evidence. If we walk. handcuff yeah. them, how much how much can you carry? The hands are like 50, 60 pounds. Oh, I I can carry the hands without a problem. Actually, as a matter of fact, one of my racial traits is uh, powerful build. You count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity for the weight you can push, drag, or left. I can literally so one you, hand, these things, put them on my head. In a blanket. Could, in a blanket, in a, blanket. In a backpack, in, in my yeah. pantalones. So we, uh... <laughs> in a train, on a plane. There's a lot of self-exam there, dude. Would, would you put you with a rock? Would you put you with my... we gun? arrest these, <laughs> no. these hombres. Yeah. Dragomir carries the hands in a blanket. Yeah. Okay. That way, no one sees the hands. No one directly... We have plausible deniability. This was just vandalism. This was just... Something else. We're taking them in. You know, they're gonna go home to their parents. This is just a big rock I found that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them in my pockets. Jump into the river. Um, what is the quickest way to notify Alder Raven Guard that this has happened? Does anybody have a magic spell that submits a message to a recipient? Wait, didn't we get something? Didn't he give us something? That would do that? No. Fuck. Um, I the closest thing I have is I can cast Find Familiar again. Turn my familiar into it. No. Okay. Oh, because it can only go like 100 feet away from me or something yeah. like that. Yeah, there are message Shit. spells and there are animal messenger spells. That's neither of those. Neither of which I have because I'm not level three yet. And your raven can't talk to people. <laughs> no. But I could give it a note. Um, They probably have people. Yeah, they probably spell. have a fairy or some way to get up to the sea tower. And or a run Without a doubt, you could catch a fairy from Worms Crossing back to the sea tower. How long that would take? Iffy. Uh, it may be worth it to transport all of this to directly to Older Raven Guard. On a boat? I mean, not that I'm saying I don't trust the fist, I, but there's a reason he moved from Worms Crossing to the Sea Tower. I like the idea of keeping them... If you put them over there, they're isolated from their family. But if you put them over here, their family's just going to friggin' storm the gates. or you know, Not necessarily storm the gates, but right. cause trouble yeah. for the Duke. I kind of, I really like it. Unless you guys really think that's a terrible place, I think he just wanted to be closer to the city and more. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm of being concerned far about one of us not being there with them because whatever's uh, like, I don't want them to die, and then we don't have our criminals slash witnesses. I don't want the hands to disappear. I don't necessarily trust anybody else in the fist other than us, and even yeah, all the Raven right. Guard. I'm a little waffly on. I'm not opposed if you guys want to bring them. I was just throwing that All out. right, I, I say let's throw them in jail, but maybe bring the evidence with us, since carrying it for me is a non-issue. Yeah, carrying it for you is a non-issue. Additionally, we could also split the party. I wouldn't... Half, half the group catches a boat or whatever up to the sea tower. Or we send a member of the fist to contact Raven Guard and have him catch a ferry downstream. Yeah, Ooh, which yeah, is let's do that. Ooh, that's a better idea. I like that idea. Yeah. All right. So I really like that. Okay. Idea. So here's let's the plan. Do that. We bring everything to Worms Crossing. 
put everybody in a cell, including yeah. the, these hands. We lock them in a cell. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then we send somebody in a boat up to get Ola Ravengard and say, get down to Worms Crossing because or you need to see this in person. They might not even need a boat to just communicate with the Sea Tower. Maybe they have magic spells. They Whatever. might have... Whatever. I, I think I think Ola Ravengard should... a long-legged boy for running. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I, but let's let's do it that way. Let's because okay. I I, yeah. I like that. Okay. I don't I don't want to let go of the one thing that we have actually accomplished in this investigation. <laughs> All right, uh, I assume you're throwing on your tabards to make it very obvious yes. you're operating under the auspice of the law. Oh yeah, I yes. never took mine off. Yeah, uh, you are able to apprehend these lads. They are terrified when you show up in the basement. Good. Uh, clearly, the perpetrators of the crime. Um, they try every trick in the book to try to, like, bribe you to let them go or, like, threaten you with their family names and all that sort of stuff. They are covered in masonry dust. Uh, it is very obvious this was not a frame job. You don't need to make rolls to determine that. These guys definitely did the crime. <laughs> you, uh, drag them out of Hadra's pottery shop. Are you bringing Hadra with you? Yes. 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 Okay, so you bring Hadra with you under much protest. Uh, the three of your folks manacled together, roped together, however you do it, uh, and your set of stone hands are paraded through the streets towards Worms Crossing, where you get lots of jeers and boos and shouts and some yays from people who live out in the outer city. Mm -hmm. Arriving at Worms Crossing, you are checked onto the bridge by a flaming fist patrol who immediately recognize your rank and admit you entry uh, in some awe that you actually solved the crime. <laughs> It's that rare in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> it's that rare in this party. <laughs> uh, you are admitted down the bridge. The bridge takes some time to traverse with your giant pair of hands and three captains. <coughs> Eventually you arrive at Worms Crossing proper, which is a, uh, a short squat tower. Uh, it does actually have a ballista mounted on top for uh, the event of a sea invasion. And there is a basement down below that has a number of cells uh, with the added quote-unquote advantage of if it ever floods, the only people who die are the captains. Mm. Oh. Great. <laughs> yeah, super cool. So you arrive here, and uh, you are checked in by the uh, attending administrator, who is uh, Junior Lieutenant Puce, Puce, who we're somewhat <laughs> familiar with. <laughs> I'm here to check you in and make sure that everything is hunky-dory. <laughs> oh, jeez! You brought some patriarchs. <laughs> Yeah. Mervin, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> um, Pew submits you entry, allows you to lock up the suspects. Uh, there's more than enough cells for them and the hands. Yeah, I think we should spread them out fairly far so they can't talk to the or... Hands? They can't corroborate. <laughs> they, you know, the two kids yes. can't corro corroborate and they can't intimidate. Hunter. Yeah, I don't really care about separating the two kids. It they can cook up whatever asinine story they want to. I just want to keep Hadru away from them. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I know you giggled, but the easiest way to keep these hands safe is just lock them in a cell by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easy to do. Uh, they agree to that. It's fairly easy. They actually have a vault for um, acquired items. Mm. Uh, and they were happy to throw out in the vault, if you like, or put them in a regular prison cell if you prefer. And as you surmised, yes, there is a ferry that traverses between Worms Crossing and the Sea Tower. Mm -hmm. uh, they also do have some messenger pigeons if you'd rather send a message that way. Probably I think that's faster. probably the way to do it. Whatever yeah. the quickest way to do it is. Yeah. Yeah, they charge you a silver coin for a messenger pigeon. We're the Flaming Fist on Flaming Fist business. Yeah, it costs a lot of money to feed them. Fine. Oh, Hungry little bastards. <laughs> receipt. Yeah, Here give me a receipt. receipt. They're fucking pigeons in the middle of a city. How much does it cost to feed them? <laughs> uh, it costs a lot to keep them from going out in the city and eating people's shit instead of... We just brought you two them. children and we only really need one. <laughs> <laughs> I just started parting them out. For, <laughs> we brought you two hands and we really only need one. Yeah. Parting them out for a it's right. pigeon feed. The best part is to separate the wings from that... Wait a minute. <laughs> No, so you uh, you pay your silver piece. Yep. You send out the messenger pigeon. It goes towards the sea tower of Balderon. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes for the flight there and back. And in about 35 minutes, you get a response from Alder Ravenguard who says that uh, he would like you to report to the sea tower of Balderon. Uh, there is important business going on currently that needs your immediate attention. Uh, he is appreciative of the work you've done on the case. <laughs> he believes the case is solved, but he needs you in the sea tower immediately. 
Mm-hmm. And let me guess, we're paying for that. For I right hope he understands job. only the tertiary goofy case is solved and not the big case. Yeah. We may have some explaining to do there, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> um, how many pigeons do I need to rent to carry me up to the sea tower? 800 <laughs> <laughs> We only have 849. <laughs> That's right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Vera? Yep. Um, oh, this so one's on the house. Oh, how generous. Yes. Uh, they ferry your ass all the way up to... Uh, are we Are we all going? Or is someone yeah, staying here to make sure that bullshit does not occur? I don't think there's any need to swap the party. Well, if Paul says it, then it must be true. Yeah. We have to okay. trust. We have to trust our own. We can't be watching yeah. everybody watch everybody. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. And like splitting the party at this point, even if they do manage to get word out to their families and their families send people, we're not gonna be the people who stop that from happening. I was uh, I was really kind of looking forward to like a battle of Lumoines like storming the rich compound. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is two shitty kids. Oh yeah. my! 